It's a new space, I'm not used to it. So the other day I was at London Liverpool Street Station at two in the morning, as you do, I just finished a crazy night out clubbing. I don't quite get clubbing. I always try and have a good time, but I never do. I will one day. Either way, there's only one place open that late. We all know what it is. I went to Macca's. I waited in line for double cheese and this girl comes in and she goes, Evan, hey, you're a YouTuber guy. I was like, That's me. And the girl next to her says, who's, who's he, what's he do? And she said, oh, Evan, he does uh, politics videos. Pilot, what? I was like, whoa, I, I can't believe that. I, I didn't know. I mean, am I in this bubble where I think I make puns and travel and, I don't know, cultural difference videos? But in reality, people are like, Evan, he's that political guy. Am I gonna change my bio to the political YouTuber? I don't, I hope not. I really don't like politics. I don't talk politics much. Uh, I find that usually when you bring up anything political, it's just psh, time for blanket statements. You say one opinion and people put you in that box, okay? Stop it with the boxes. Try and view people a bit more complexly. And that's the main purpose I actually had for the two previous videos I've done on political issues was maybe you should view it in this way as well and not just kind of follow what everyone else is thinking. And I feel like along the same line, I've experienced a bit of a rebirth in a way, a, a, a me renaissance, the title. It's kind of like a meme renaissance, except it's not quite as cool because it's me, but Essentially, I feel like so many of my core values recently have changed and I like it. Because we as humans believe a lot of things, but there are those central things that represent us that have been instilled in us at such an early age that if they are threatened to change or if someone like brings up some information that would cause one of those to change in any way, it kind of throws your whole being out of whack, if you understand what I'm saying. There are three goodles. <laughs> the goodles. There are three goodles. As an American, I can easily come up with three good examples of this. One, don't have sex. Blanket statement, all sex is bad. I mean, for the most part, religion, school, parents push that message at a very early age and it's not until you begin to question why it's like that. Why is this bad? Wait, how is it not? And you begin to have other experiences that counter what you've grown up to learn. And that is weird when you have to try and explain to yourself that this is an okay thing even though your whole life you were told it wasn't. It's the same with drug education. All drugs are bad, you're told. Not necessarily. Do we take an aspirin when we have a headache? Yes, well that's medicine, it's a different type of, okay, what about alcohol? That's legal, and yet that's really bad. Loads of people injure themselves in alcohol every day. There's illegal ones that aren't. Just, basically, the more you research on different things that you're told, the more your core beliefs may change, and that is really freaky. Freaky, I'm a very intellectual person I am. I said I am twice, I mean, I'm just driving to the point here. I remember when I was in kindergarten and I realized I could stick up my middle finger without the other ones up, and I thought this was such a cool talent, and I wanted to show everyone, and so I did. And then I got in big trouble and put out in the hallway and then I kept doing it and I got suspended that day. And the reason I kept doing it, no one told me why. It was just like, don't do it, it's bad. I, I need answers. I need answers. That's the type of person I am, I guess. Even as a six-year-old little boy, I'm like, mommy, tell me why. Turns out it's just, it's bad. It means a swear. It's offensive. Okay, it's all I wanted. I mean, I wanted an actual answer. I got some history behind it as well. But I never want to take things like that at face value. I really need more answers. And the third, and I feel like biggest one I'm gonna be talking about in this video is patriotism. As an American child, from the age of like six to the age of 17, you're reciting a Pledge of Allegiance every single day of your life while you're in school. And if you think a bit more about it, it gets weird. Like you can just do it because that's what you're supposed to do. That's what everyone's doing. But if you think too much about it, it starts to freak you out. What are you saying? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. That's something a soldier would say. That's something a warrior would say. You're pledging allegiance to a country. You're gonna go out and fight. Why? Why should I be doing this? I'm a you know 10 year old boy. Why am I pledging allegiance to a country? What has a country done for me? Is this patriotism, this love for my country, is it instilled in me from other people? Do I have to love it? Because at that point, it's not patriotism. It's a, it's a different word. It starts with an F that's being thrown around a lot lately. I don't really want to use the word, but if you're not freely loving the country, if you're not loving it on your own fruition, it's not really patriotism, is it? But Evan, you don't have to do the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm sure. No, you, you kinda do. I mean, if you don't do the Pledge of Allegiance, you get docked points for participation, as messed up as that is. And two, even if you fight that, you're then outcasted as someone that hates America. You're an American hater. That is the most annoying thing to me, is that there is no middle ground. You can't just like your country. You either love it, and you do everything that they tell you to do and you succumb to the brainwashing or you hate it. You're basically burning your flags. Nah, I had a call with my mom a couple months ago in which I told her, you know, once I get my UK passport, pray that I do, I don't really need my US one anymore. I'll toss it, you know, I don't need that. She openly wept. She wept because she, it was almost like she was losing her son. She was like, I don't know, America's given you so many opportunities. You gotta be thankful. And I was like, F -f what? I mean, I understand that to an extent, but the viewpoint that America is the best country ever and everyone else is terrible is a 
just toxic, dangerous sentiment to have. That's like, I remember I was in LA for the 4th of July this year and there was this really drunk woman that was like, do you know not think America's the number one country and best country? Well, you just go leave, go to some third world country. What flawless logic? What fl if, so if you don't think we're number one, go to the last one. Uh, it's, it's almost like assuming every other country that's on America is terrible. It's not true. We are literally in America, not the best in anything except war. I mean, we're really good at military. That's not something I'm really proud of. I mean, I think as an American, yes, even though I live in England and I love England, I do consider myself American. I do have these values that have been instilled in me despite the fact that I might want to change them. And so when things go wrong in my country, my home country, it hurts me, it affects me. I want my country to be better. I don't want to just leave, even though I have. I mean, I, I want to improve it. I want the healthcare to be good. I want the education to be better. I want everywhere to be better. And I mean, I'm from there and I'd like, you know, to be able to tell people I'm American and not have to lie and say, oh, I'm from Canada. I remember when I was in ninth grade, I had to memorize the poem that was on the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses, yearning to breathe free. I lift my lamp beside the golden ore. That is, it is beautiful. Just imagine being someone in a war-torn country or someone that's just not able to make ends meet and they hear this poem of this beautiful place full of opportunity, full of th the chances to do anything with your life and like make money, I guess, and live the American dream. That's beautiful. That's what I was taught growing up is what America is. It's a, it's a country that can be for anyone. It's a great melting pot. And yet more and more like comes out with the US now that's countering that and it goes against my core values. Uh, it, it goes against what I know as an American is supposed to represent. Um, and I know that you can view the Muslim ban or, or the vetting or whatever you want to call it in any way you can. I mean, if you're on the right, if you're on the left, you're going to call it things because you really, you know, stick to your sides. But me, the one thing that it hurt me with is that it's no longer a place that people can go. Now it's just only certain types of people and that it does upset me. It upsets me because that's not the America that I was risen up with propaganda to believe in. And so there I go, changing my core values. I get upset. I mean, no matter what you think of the president or whatever's going on there, just one thing I would like to drive home in this video, this, this weird video that I'm making, research what you believe, research why you believe certain things. You will feel so much better when you come to your final conclusion because you made that decision. You as a free thinker, you didn't just do it because you've been told to or because that's what everyone else is doing, but because you came to that conclusion. If I could have one person watching this video to realize that there's so much more to life than just two sides and to view the world a bit more complexly, I would find this video a success. I know I hit this topic a bit superficially, but that's because I'm making a bigger video on the topic around April with a friend for a new YouTube series I'm starting. That's exciting. But I would like to ask you, do you feel patriotic to your country and why? Like, what is the reason for that? Do you feel like it's from something they gave to you? Do you have to? Is it like, I don't know, it's such an interesting topic, whether you're American or you're not. Everyone has different beliefs and it'd be interesting to hear that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you want, you can watch this video over here. It's a good one. It's lighthearted, right? No more politics, just a fun one. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next Sunday for an Ask video. See you then, goodbye. Mom! Recently, I've been thinking about it a bit more and your mom is my mom. We're brothers.